So this morning, the concentration of lead was 1.0 parts per billion. I teach at an urban school, and environmental racism is something that plagues the community that our kids are from. And so I was looking for a project that included this idea of environmental racism, but in sort of a larger context. The crisis in Flint would serve as the main case study that my students would focus on to explore this idea. I want you to consider a different perspective, a different compound you may think might work. One of the major issues with the Flint water crisis was that public officials did not include corrosive inhibitors. Uh, corrosive inhibitors are typically used to prevent lead leaching into the water system. And so the driving question for this project became, what is the most effective corrosive inhibitor? So there are three exhibits for this mystery piece. Here is how we're going to interact with the posters. We're going to use this thinking routine called see, think, and wonder. There are two for things you see, I see that. There are two for I think, my interpretation of what I see is, and then I wonder. I have a question, and this is my question. So we kicked off the project using a mystery piece, and the purpose of the mystery piece was to captivate the student's interest in the particular topic that we'd be studying without fully giving it away. And so the mystery piece consisted of pictures, text, graphs, images of the Flint water crisis. And the purpose of this was basically to spark the curiosity of the students. I wanted them to make an emotional connection to this project. So the big reveal, this semester, we are going to be studying water quality, okay? And we're gonna be looking at Flint, Michigan. I was fortunate enough to see all of the really interesting ideas you posted. What I want you to do now is make that public to your group. Well, I wondered why people still have to fight for water when it should be all right. And people still, people in Flint still don't have clean water. It's been years. I also wondered if the schools do choose to shut the fountains down, what are they gonna use as a replacement? And so during our whole class debrief, I used another protocol I used to think and now I think. And uh, one of the students thought about Flint but his thinking got challenged because of some of the images that we saw. Our learning targets for today are, I can design an experiment to test the effectiveness of corrosive inhibitors. I can develop a testable hypothesis. I can generate a hypothesis based on my research. So after the entry event, students needed to develop background knowledge on the topic. Marcus, others would say, Others would say that sodium silicate is a more effective um, corrosive inhibitor because it serves uh, both, uh, both needs. And so we read secondary sources, we watched videos, we listened to podcasts about what was happening in Flint, and we generated lots of questions. And then we categorized those questions into two lists, what I need to know and what I want to know. And then we subcategorized those questions into other lists. Are the questions quickly answerable? Do they lead to a scientific investigation? Are they open-ended? Are they narrow? Based on your knowledge of corrosive inhibitors, which would be the most effective? What makes you say that? According to Scientific American, how lead ended up in Flint drinking water, not applying orthophosphate into the water regularly will cause O2 to react with lead atoms, oxidizing them. And once they're oxidized, the lead dissolves into the water instead of sticking to the pipes. And one question that came up over and over again is, what's the best corrosive inhibitor? And then we did our mandatory PubMed Google search. We wanted to see if someone had asked that question. We found through our research that no one had done the study before. And then there was a need to publish this work. And so we determined that the audience for the study would be the Flint officials. The second constituency we're sending this paper to are the scientists at Virginia Tech. Our idea emerged from their paper, and we think that our knowledge will be useful to addressing this problem. And then the kids were told to design an experiment. How did you come up with this? I just thought of the water cycle and how like, uh, water evaporates. After they designed their idea, they came into the laboratory and they set up their experiments, and it was full steam ahead. And they're just so excited to see what happens. I sort of have to hold them at bay. But I sit them down and I have them go through this routine, predict, observe, explain, where even before they see what they want to see or make their observations, they have to predict. 
They check out what's happened, that's their observation, and they explain what they've seen based on science. Yesterday, my lead levels were 0 0.5, and I expect to go down to 0 0.3. Okay, my hypothesis has not been supported by the data, so I stated that polyethylene glycol would be the most effective at stopping corrosion. And so but in the lab, students were mixing a certain amount of water with corrosive inhibitor and adding a lead. And every day, they were measuring the amount of lead that was leached, and they were measuring the quantity of lead using one of the pieces of equipment that we have. And then they were documenting this in Microsoft Excel to do statistical analysis. I'm really excited to work with you all today to sort of hear about uh, the research that you've been doing. What I do now, going to, to school as a PhD student, is a lot of stuff with um, statistical analysis. Hi, my name is Ari. I'm also a senior. Um, from the past, I also have experience with T-tests, ANOVA tests, and Z-scores. I invited experts into the room. And so these experts range from students who had taken the class with me to PhD students to people who are currently using statistics and math teachers. It was important for me to have the students see people who look like them, who are friendly, who are experts in the work, working alongside them to teach them something. And so what's your goal for today? Uh, today is, you know, just to finish uh, pairing up all the corrosive inhibitors with each other. So if I get a T of 1.9, I would say, oh, this might just be random noise in my data. It's like if I have a coin and I flip it 100 times. Okay. Do you think I'm going to get exactly 50 heads, exactly 50 times? No. no. And so what that looked like for that particular day was I'm going to meet with an expert about statistics. I want to learn how to use t-tests. I still don't get it. And this becomes the basis of the conversation with the adults, as opposed to what traditionally has happened. I don't know what to do. Tell me. I think this structure promotes a sense of agency. I have some control over my life and I can advocate for what I need. We also have to control different kinds of elements in this. So in this case, it would be independent and dependent variable. Some effects of lead in water, especially it affects a lot of children and infants and pregnant women because they're not fully developed yet. Because since lead can be found in different water sources, using methane, it can help clean heavy metals. Part of writing this paper is having their work undergo public scrutiny. And so in our class, we have that through presentations. Can you restate your hypothesis? Because you probably said it, but I wasn't really clear exactly what your hypothesis was. It was really nice to have experts assess them, give them really positive feedback, and also learn alongside them in designing something that was novel to both the students and the experts in the room. You guys were extremely thorough and that you had healthy debate and I think that's really, really good. I was just in a grad school class on regression and tons of like grown adults can't talk about this in a coherent way, right? You guys are well on your way. Teaching kids how to be self-directed is really important. Teaching kids how to be curious is really important. And I also think kids actually care that their project has a final destination that's not my file cabinet. It's going to help real people that they've emotionally invested with. They're adding to a body of knowledge for which no knowledge exists. Their work means something.